Hello, and welcome to the book blogging and booktube panel, where all your, all your questions about books are answered. Uh, my name is Beth Tabler, and I run Before We Go Blog, and I'm the procurement editor for Grimdark Magazine. Um, if everybody wants to, <laughs> yeah, the issue came out today. <laughs> 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 if everybody wants to introduce themselves and talk about what their what their sites are, that would be great. Get some background. Uh, David, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. So uh, David Walters, uh, aka Lord TBR, over on Twitter. Um, I uh, I started uh, Fanfy Addict. Uh, gosh, it's been about six years ago. Um, just started on little WordPress, and now we've got nice, nice, beautiful little site uh, we've had for a little over a year. Um, also started TBRCon that we're on right now, uh, two years ago, uh, which has been, uh, been an awesome thing. We won a stabby last year, which was pretty great. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully more to come, but, uh, just really excited to be here. And, uh, Beth, thanks so much for hosting. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, Alan. That was a cool promo. It was really cool. That was so good. <laughs> um, I'm Alan. I have a booktube channel, the library of Alan Zandria, not Alexandria. I finally got it to where YouTube will shut up and stop trying to steer people to the actual library. Like before you couldn't find it by typing in my channel name, but I think I'm finally there. Anyway, I talk about fantasy, some science fiction, but it's mostly fantasy. Um, I sometimes do book Jeopardy, which is my favorite thing to do online. Um, Jeopardy. Yeah, I love Jeopardy. I love, I love trivia games. So it's a, tri it's trivia about books and, uh, Bookborn down there has been on there twice <laughs> and it gives her, she can't sleep. It gives her anxiety. Um, yeah. Anyway, I see a lot of people I know in the comments. So what up? Thanks for having hey. me. I forgot to say that. Sorry. And I yelled. I'm here. Hey. Hi, Beth. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Mihi Wanchu. I am part of the Fantasy Book Critic crew. Um, I interview authors, review books at Fantasy Book Critic. We have been the Vina Bina blog since 2007. I've been blogging since 2009. I've been lucky enough to be a part of SPFPO, uh, judging from 2015. Uh, and I get to hang out with all these cool folks. And Alan, cool thing with the Je book Jeopardy. I definitely want to check it out. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm a geek for trivia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Heck yes. <laughs> uh, Bookborn? Um, hi, everybody. I'm Bookborn. I run the YouTube channel Bookborn. I've been doing that for about two years, and I talk about fantasy and sci-fi like everybody else, and a lot of stuff, more meta stuff around fantasy and sci-fi. Um, I have been on Book Jeopardy. It is terrifying, but they are very fun to watch, so I very much recommend everyone go and watch them, just not my episodes. Go watch the other ones. Let me in peace. Um, I did message Alan like the night before, like I can never be on this again. Like I'm losing sleep over <laughs> book Jeopardy, but um, yeah, it's been great. I've also, I guess, because Mihir mentioned it, I'm a first year SPFBO judge, so I've been uh, doing that this year, which has been really fun. I should probably mention that too. Um, we're also an SPFBO judge. Yeah, we're yeah. We're all, all of us together, just you know, hanging out, doing the whole <laughs> self-published uh, book thing. Yeah. So why, why book blogging and booktubing? What brought you to it? Are we in order or? I'll just jump about, in. I'll, I'll just jump in. Just, just shout out answers. <laughs> I, I'm really good at shouting out answers. Just shout out answers. It was, it was COVID. Not even, like I was sitting there, I don't know. I looked something up. Like I was reading, I mean, I've always read fantasy, and I, but I don't have any friends that do. And so it was COVID and I was reading some Malazan book and I went to look something up and something popped up and I was like, people talk about books on YouTube. Why? And so like I watched, <laughs> I watched a bunch of videos and I, and you know, then I was like, you know, I was bored. Like my students wouldn't listen to what I was saying because teaching online and that works. Um, all of a sudden their grades drastically improve. Get out of here. Um, and so I was like, I gotta have some kind of outlet because I can't, I can't really teach because only like a third of them show up, and the other ones they have their camera off because they're playing God of War or something. Uh, and so I, I asked my wife, I'm like, hey, like I bet I can maybe do this. 
And so I didn't. And my first video took eight hours to edit because I didn't know any of the first thing about video editing. And so that's why, because I wanted to talk to people about books. But when you start, you're really talking to the void about books which you can do offline. Like you don't have to make <laughs> <laughs> so uh so yeah, so that's that's why I started. And then I I don't know, just got sucked into it and now I do it all the time. But you want to ask Hillary, or sorry, Bookborn. You want to ask Bookborn? <laughs> she's she's the one. She's the one with the with the with the magic yeah. formula. Ask her. She's the one that's no, got it figured out. I don't have it figured out, but it's nice that you think that. Um, it's interesting. I was actually going to start book blogging back in 2015 is when I first had the idea, for the same reason Alan did, which was like I had all these ideas in my head and nobody around me to talk to them about because. You know, I have a couple friends who read fantasy, but at some point they're tired of talking to you about it. So like you can only, I mean, you can only message them so many times about the same thing. And um, I was actually, I started a bunch of work for a book blog, um, but I just didn't have time. And so I didn't get around to it till 2019. And at that point, uh, my husband suggested I should try a booktube instead. Um, and so I did. He bought me a camera for a Christmas present and was like, if I buy you this now, you have to do it because I hate wasting money. <laughs> and so he was like, I bought it for you and now you have to. So it is interesting. I did start in 2020, like a lot of people, but it had been an Last idea. Of 2020. Brewing. <laughs> I know. It had been a brewing idea for years and years and years. Just the same talking to the void. I mean, why do any of us start it? I think it's for the love of books and just wanting to, to share ideas with people. Well, Bookborn has 20K subs now, so she's not talking to the void. She's talking to a small army. Good Lord. <laughs> Still a void, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> Kudos, Bookborn. Yeah. Thank you. What about you, David? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I read a lot earlier in life and then really took a break through, like, college. Um, I just, you know, try to do the whole college thing and, like, if I wasn't going to read my textbooks, why would I read anything outside of that? Um, and then I got out and I was like, man, I really need a hobby. Uh, and so uh, my, my brother-in-law loves books. And so he gifted me a couple for Christmas, ended up being uh, Wool by Hugh Howey and The Martian by Andy Weir. And I was like, well, I haven't read books in like six years. Let's test these out. And they were phenomenal. And I was like, well, I need to read more like this. Um, and it led me to like early, early self-publishing. So like, you know, Hugh did it first and then like everybody kind of started doing like, I'm going to write Hugh's world. And so I'd read, uh, you know, indie pubs that were doing that. And uh, it kind of led me to doing reviews, doing Amazon reviews. Um, and then uh, Book Nest uh, picked me up. Um, and that was kind of my early introduction to reviewing. Um, and then about a year after being on there, I decided to kind of branch off and do my own. So uh, like I said, I started off on a WordPress site, uh, you know, pretty much talking to myself. Uh, I had, you know, very few followers on Twitter. Um, then a couple of people kind of started latching on and I brought some more people on so we could get more content uh, and just kind of grew from there. Um, and then, of course, you know, I, I did author interviews for a couple of years just because I had time to do it, which I don't now with a toddler and a full-time gig and all that stuff. But uh, that's what led to doing Mayday Con uh, during COVID because, we all needed something uh, as you know the the booktubers have said we we needed something to do so i was like well what's what's a better way with all these all these authors that are stuck at home you know might as well just get on a camera and talk about books for a full day uh which man that was that was a lot that was a that was a full day back to back to back to back to back stuff um and that's what led us to doing tbr con and doing, doing it for a full week which has been which has been wonderful so but yeah it, it you know, it kind of started out as I wasn't really reading. And then I started reading and I was like, well, I have nobody else to talk to besides my brother-in-law. So maybe I can find some people online that will actually <laughs> want to maybe listen. Mahir, what about you? Well, uh, there's going to be a team, you know, three people so far th said the same thing, you know, that we all wanted to talk to someone and there was nobody around. Uh, mine's slightly different. It's along the same lines. I was in India. I grew up, I was born and brought up in India. So I literally had one person, my best friend who, knew and read the books that I did. And so we all, we, that, we, that was all that we talked to. Uh, when I came to the U.S. or when I immigrated to the U.S., that's when, you know, I still also follow all the original blogs like, uh, you know, Word Zone, Pat's Fantasy Hotlist, Fantasy Book Critic and all of that. 
And one day I used to love to like, you know, reach out to authors because to tell them like how much I love their stuff. And I managed to interview one of the authors and I approached Fantasy Book Critic, who was, you know, at that time the owner of the blog, Robert Thompson. He's a really friendly guy. And I told him, like, hey, I have this interview. I know you have reviewed this book. Uh, do you want the interview? And he's like, yeah. And he liked the interview. So he's like, why don't you try? Do you want to review books? I'm like, what does that mean? He's like, you get three books. I'm like, yes, I'm in. <laughs> you know, because in India, we barely got any books. You know, I used to like, I have read so many series out of order with just random books that happened to be in India back then. This is, of course, 20 years ago. Now the landscape has changed thanks to Amazon. But back then, it was just really weird. So that's how I got started in 2009. And again, similar to everyone, you know, thanks to, you know, being online, I found more and more people who want to talk about the same thing or, you know, want to be like, hey, have you read this book? Or, you know, do you want to talk to this author and stuff like that? So been doing that since quite a while. And then I got to meet all of you. So that's even, that's been even more exciting. Absolutely. Uh, let's see, how did I get my start? So I started a website before we go in 20, 2016. All right. I'm real annoying <laughs> when it comes to like lists, yep. real annoying. So I used to have all of these lists on the site, you know, like do things before you go, before you die, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but most of the lists that I had were books because I'm a complete book geek. And at the time, well, I still am. I'm trying to read like the canonical lists, you know, the 50 best fantasy, the times 100 best science fiction, you know, those lists. And I was like, oh, well, I, you know, I could put, I could put, you know, a review up on my site for the one person who's going to read it. Absolutely. <laughs> and then, and then it just, you know, uh, what is it? December where every, the, the challenge where you post every single day in December, I forgot what it's called. I'm like, well, I can do that. So I did that every day in December and then it turned into a book blogging site. So now I have, before we go, <laughs> <laughs> is the name of the site. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, and then I, you know, I was really writing reviews and stuff, and I had, I had a lot of content. And then uh, Grim Dark Magazine read some of my reviews and asked me, "Hey, you want to be, you want to be a part of the team?" And I jumped at the chance of that. And then I started doing a lot of interviewing. I love interviewing. And I interviewed some really, really great people now. Um, and like, I just finished an interview with Brandon Sanderson, which is just... Pike drop. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no, I... no big deal. You know? <laughs> no one's heard of that indie author. Nah, it's crazy. Who's that guy? It's, cra it's crazy. It's, it's a huge opportunity. It's crazy. So yeah, and I started going there and then I became the, the editor of actual grimdark magazine the the issues so now i put together the the actual issues of the magazine i i go through the stories i pitch to different authors i do the whole thing make sure everybody gets work with adrian to make sure everybody gets paid it's it's really i do the concepts for the magazine covers it's really amazing That's it awesome. feels good it feels like what i'm supposed to be doing and then um, before we go, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, before we go, um, I started bringing more people onto the team because I want a, I want a variety of content. I want lots and lots of viewpoints. So we have authors. We share. <laughs> Dave and I share Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> she calls us mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've got I've got really wonderful authors and there's their viewpoints and then I've got great reviewers, romance, you know, the whole I'm trying to get the whole spectrum. Cyberpunk. And it's just it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. I think we're at sixteen hundred posts now or something. Wow. Nice. Yeah. It's it's really it's really wonderful. So I got and then I have SBFBO also which is, mm -hmm. I have an SBFBO, <laughs> I have a lot going on. I have an SBFBO team too. <laughs> kind of like you were saying, though, I feel like having having a, a, a growing team is what's so cool because not mm -hmm. only like I brought all these people on just to like post reviews, but you know, now we've got uh, an indie touring company that does book tours for, for different indie authors. We've got multiple authors that have, have published multiple books. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's just kind of crazy what 
just kind of sprouts out of out of those little things. You're just like, hey, you want to come write some views? Great. Six months later, hey, I'm going to go publish my first book. Uh, is that cool? <laughs> it's like, sure, do whatever you want to. Um, but yeah, you just you just kind of never know what's going to happen once you just give somebody you know a little extra. Just be like, hey, you know, here's a website. If you want to post on it, great. If you just exactly. want to be a part and talk to people, great. Um, you know, but it's just kind of a, a you know open arms. Everybody's welcome. Uh, if it doesn't work out, you know, we'll still help you out in any way you need kind of thing. Mm -hmm. so. Love boosting um, self-published authors, too. It was great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Book um, Warren, don't you, don't, aren't you running something to help boost self-published people? I mean, we are. It's starting in February again this year. Oh, if anyone knows, right. IFF is Indie Fantasy Fund. Mm -hmm. um, yeah which is something my husband and I set up to support indie fantasy authors who maybe don't have the capital to do some things that you need to do as a indie. So that is kicking off in February. Just give us eight days <laughs> for amazing. our second year. I mean, it was really successful last year. You can go look it up. We, um, yep. we got to give away $6,000 to indie uh, authors, which was really, really Ooh. great. And yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> it's um, fun scene. Like, I know Sarah Chorn is working on her audiobook, like, and that's what we gave her the money for. And so it's like very exciting <laughs> to see that stuff. Like, oh, like, look, we actually like physically were able to help somebody do a thing. Um, so that's been really rewarding. Also, for the people who just don't know this, the 10 people who don't know this, Bookborns, uh, uh, book awesome husband is Zach Argyle, yeah. uh, SPFP a finalist and awesome guy all around. And in the author, I know I, I never talk about him. And people, like a lot of people are surprised to find out where Mary, like it'll be like Zach will do something, they'll be like, Hey, that background is Bookhorn's background. Like, yeah, I'm married Zach, to him. Zach's the best. I always know, I always know I by the shield. He's my neighbor. I mean, yeah. I always know by the shield. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm really weird and I never want to like, you know, I don't know, nepotism, never want to talk about his projects and. He always finds me so funny for that. So yeah, a lot of people um, end up finding that out accidentally, but here it is, cat's out of the bag. Uh, we, both, we both love books, both been in the book community for a while, so. Plus that shield is a dead giveaway. You know? I know, like, that's the thing. It's like too, it's too recognizable of a background. Hey, at least you guys get to talk about books. Yeah, yeah well, I was gonna say, like, yeah, that's who the main person who was like, dude, you gotta go get someone else to talk to this about. Like it's <laughs> it's bedtime. Like, okay, we've talked about it. Like there's nothing more to say. I'm like, I have more to say though. So uh, I think it was self-preservation, um, <laughs> if anything, for him to encourage me to start a booktube channel. It is really nice to be able to talk to people about your your love of books because I don't have anybody really around me that reads like I read and I'm just, hey, did you did you hear about such and such author? And they're like, no, no. no. It's funny because in the community, you definitely get a warped sense of what people know. Because when all, you know, most of the time now I'm talking to all you guys now. Now that I'm on online and everyone here is so involved in the book community and knows so much about what's going on. And you can sometimes just go talk to an average person. It's like, oh, yeah, I like to read fantasy. And I'm like, oh, great. And I'm like dumping all this info. And they're like, I, what are you talking? Like, I don't know any of this. And so it is funny. I think you do get like this warped sense um, when you're in the small community. But it is such a great one. Like, I have met, I'm sure everyone would say the best thing about book blogging and book tubing is the people you meet. Mm -hmm. I think that's the number one everything everyone says. Like, it's worth that's it. That's all anybody just says. For, yep. Mm -hmm. it's all, because it's true. It's true. Yeah. Everyone is just so fantastic. Yeah, I, there's such a great community of book people on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't know, but Twitter <laughs> yeah, is yeah. Very, I, I can't with Twitter, but there's a great amount of people on YouTube. <laughs> they're on Instagram, mm -hmm. Discord, uh, everywhere. Yeah. The book community is great. Yeah, I'm trying to do Discord. I'm, I'm trying to pick it up. I don't know. I'm so in on Twitter. It's like I have to learn something new. Discord. That's been, Discord's <laughs> been one of the, like, when I first started out, um, I was in like one of the only book discords like I knew about. It was a huge um, run by my friend, uh, Jesse May, who's like the reason that I really have a channel because when I was like 160 subs, I had been in her discord and she shouted me out on her channel. And so overnight I went to like 320 subs and I'm like, holy crap. Um, <laughs> And then I just, I hung out in Discord like a bunch. There's a bunch of, class of 2020 was the best. Um, 
like I'm, I'm really good friends with everybody who started a channel like then. Um, and there's been a bunch since then and they're, they're all cool too. All the ones that I've met also. Um, but I think some people jump in like expecting to like, I don't know. I don't know who, who they're modeling after or whatever, um, but you can't jump in expecting to be like, boom, everyone's going to watch my stuff. Cause my stuff's so brilliant. And Ooh. like, like that's a, that's a shortcut that I mean, maybe lightning will strike, but like my channel, it was built on the backs of like, like, community building like like knowing everybody like the people i the, the people that watch my channel i think the only people that watch my channel are people like i've talked to before i was really active in the comments um of everyone's video like especially when i started out like i made sure like if someone was commenting on my channel and they had a channel i was going to watch their videos and i was going to comment now currently i follow way too many channels and i feel so bad when i can't comment on people's video all the time um, but I spent a lot of time in discord and even now, and then, you know, I had my own discord and this was pretty much everyone has their own discord now, but back then, like they, they, they didn't really. And so I spent a ton of time in discord, like just talking to people and balancing like the filming and the editing and let alone the reading, screw the reading. There's no time for that. It's the filming and the editing and the, and the community building. So that it's balancing all of that is, is crazy, but doing it without the community building part is less fun because yeah. I mean, like, this isn't my job. I don't have 500,000 subs to where I can just not do that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it, like, I'm not doing it for my career. So why am I doing it otherwise? And so it's for the, um, it's, you know, for the community building and the people I know and, and all that kind of stuff. And then, then you can just say, say in jokes because people have been watching your channel for so long like i forget when i'll do something and people be like i don't know what that means in a video and i'm like oh sorry like <laughs> i'm doing that for the people i've been friends with for like three years and they get it because you know and so then i have to explain it and, and stuff like that anyway the community is is a good part and recently i've been meeting a lot of like self-published authors who are all so nice mm -hmm. and as soon as like i meet someone who's cool i'm like man i want to read your book now but TBRs are out too. of control, yeah. as you all know. Yeah. I would bet on this one, though. Discord is a little bit tricky because unless you're in a specific server, you don't really know like what's happening. Mm -hmm. Twitter is nicer because you know once you're out of Twitter, you can at least search for people and you'll get to see everything. Discord, unless you're invited to a specific server, you're just going to be hanging out in that one server and that's all your world sure. is. So with that. But the community is still nice on Twitter. Of course, there's Twitter is crazier. But... <laughs> I would say book Twitter is at least better and nicer. Uh, you know, so long as you follow the the, the normalish people and the book chatter. I'm saying normalish because what's normal -ish. really normal? Yeah, I mean, like you know, what's really normal? So, but I follow all of you guys, or at least you know, uh, you know, who are is on Twitter, and I try to try to chat with those people. And it's self-published. Alan hit on a good point. Self-published authors are really some of the nicest people. Authors in general are really nice because mm -hmm. you talk to them about books and you kind of get this sense like, oh yeah, this guy's like, oh, this person is like me. He gets it or they want to talk about it. And so it's really fun. But Discord is still a little bit hands off for me. Yeah. And, and it depends. Like if you go into a, like a pre-established server, especially when it's huge, like uh, a huge complaint people have about Discord is they feel like they can't, like it's clicked off already. And so they can't be part of the discussion. And so in my Discord, like I really, really try to have that not happen. Um, I have really good mods, like they're all like friends of mine from when I first started my channel who will just be like, hey, what if we weren't rude right now? You know, like rude people tend to leave my Discord really fast because I don't like people being rude. And, it, you know, right. I also don't have 5,000 people, but I don't like people being rude. We don't talk about anything that could like set people off. Like if you want to have a, if you want to have like fiery opinion about books, that's fine. But you can do that without telling someone they're an idiot for thinking that way. <laughs> the only people people do that to me is me. Like Alan, your opinions are terrible. I'm like, I know, but like, that's, kind of, that's kind of my brand. I read books no one reads, so I can complain about no one reading books with me. And I have bad opinions about books that other people read. So I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs>
but book Twitter, book Twitter's like like a haven city in the middle of like the wild west. A cesspool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's like an island in a cesspool. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the place where everyone's agreed, like you can't kill each other. You leave your weapons at the door. It's fine. That's where everyone goes, hang out, plays cards, um, listens to the player piano. Um, yeah. But as soon as they leave, you know, there's a posse waiting to like shoot them or round them up or be like, oh, how dare you? <laughs> yeah, you just don't leave. You stay in your little <laughs> bubble. No, that's what it's like. <laughs> Every now and then someone slips across the border and it's like, how'd you get here? You broke all the, you broke all the pre agreed upon like unspoken laws. <laughs> and they drag and them out behind an ox cart. I would also say that book Twitter, especially the adult side of things, is slightly better than YA Twitter. YA oh, Twitter is wild. Why? And YA wild, Twitter is wild. Yeah. Really wild. Like I try to stay, stay away from that stuff because that stuff will get your blood, blood boiling. But yeah, adult look, uh, fantasy, SF thriller. Twitter is still fun, and you know, mm -hmm. most people are reasonable. I'll say that most people are reasonable. Yeah, and and the people that aren't reasonable, they get drug by everybody, <laughs> yep. like bad. really quickly. It's like bad. it spreads <laughs> fast, and yeah. so like if you have a really bad take, and everybody thinks your take is bad, you're pretty much done. <laughs> at least yes. at least for yes. a few months until <laughs> until the dust settles. I love so, mob rule. Six, the mob sixty, yeah. <laughs> 60 <laughs> comments and like. 60 yes. retweets and oh uh, yeah yeah it's, <laughs> that that's the one thing that i do enjoy because i mean I'll, I'll literally log on and go okay what happened today guys and uh it's literally like the first six tweets and i go okay well i can just go ahead and close twitter for the rest of the day we're good um <laughs> but yeah for, for the most part i, I mean I, i've i've loved just the community building on twitter but you know there there are days where i just get on there and just uh just especially with all like the changes that have come to Twitter about, mm -hmm. you know, how you actually see posts and whose posts you see and what Twitter thinks you want to see, That's which really is pretty annoying. much what every other platform does now. Facebook thinks it knows what you want and Instagram does the same thing. Facebook does so, not know what I want. It is <laughs> bad at that job. <laughs> I'm like, what if you just showed me my friends? Like that's literally why I click. Why do I see the same post? four times by this guy I don't like I don't want to see your barbecue man like I saw it yesterday <laughs> why is it the same post about the barbecue you are having meanwhile oh, yeah. it's my like it's like friend the reels is, now. like losing his job and stuff and it won't show me yeah yeah it's like it's like you know if, you know you, you just like start scrolling and it's just reel after reel after reel and you can't hide them anymore like they're mm -hmm. just there it's just to keep scrolling yeah it, you know that uh, I started on Twitter just like making my own list of like people that I think you know, I yeah. would actually need to boost and so forth. So, you know, I pull indie authors, I pull other bloggers because I'm just like, I, I just don't have time to go through all the stuff that people have retweeted or this is, this is a person that two, two people you follow like, so you need to see this. Uh, and it's like, I, I really, I really don't actually. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I, I've, I've really kind of honed it down now um, and it's, it's become a little bit nicer, but it's still not something that I'm on all day, every day. I just don't have time for it. Yeah, it takes a lot more work than it used to. Yeah, like it used yeah, to be very easy. Not so much anymore. I don't know what these social media companies have against chronological timeline. You know, all of them just hate the chronological timeline. They don't want you to see what's coming out right now. They want you to see what they think is best for you. It's 16 annoying. hours ago. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Eight hours ago, sixteen hours ago, or like you, like David said, you know, this person like this, maybe you'll like it. I'm like, no, I just want to see what whom I follow. I want you to show me what they had posted <laughs> right now, rather than twenty or. 20 I want to see what ago. Facebook was like a decade ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, all those all those um, algorithms are really designed to keep you algorithms. coming back and hang out and and scroll. So no, they aren't designed to show you what you want. They're designed to show you something in a way to um, keep you there. And trying so, to get you to buy something. Um, or buy something, um, mm -hmm. or just have other That's people sign up, use. So, yeah, they're not in your best interest. <laughs> that is true. It's not like anyone I think here was uh, under any delusion that that was the case. But <laughs> I, I, thought they were. I thought they there. wanted to deliver a user experience the user wanted. <laughs> I'm stupid. <laughs> Alan, you can start a company and I'll join it. Um, and your company yeah, can I'm be just start about a social giving. media company and it's going to show it in order of the things that happen in alphabetical order of the last names of your friends. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. It's going to be deep down a little too much there. There's no ads. Oh, God. You just, so great. You just scroll and see what people um, did. How are you going to make money? 
I, I'm, From I'm YouTube. not. <laughs> it's doing this for free. Yeah, it's all okay, my perfect. all my like my my youtube wealth i have like a chest of spanish doubloons from you know all my ad revenue from all three people that watch hey, the videos and alan you know the best part is if you piss off elon musk enough he'll eventually buy it so then you know you'll end up be a billionaire as well I'm, yes i'm i'm gonna start the twitter equivalent of the yep. michael scott paper company and have him come and like <laughs> buy me out <laughs> uh. all right Let's talk. Let's let's go back to the book ball. Or the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this let's is still about, part of blogging, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, this is this is a part of blogging. So let's talk about actual writing a review. Mm -hmm. What are your guys' process for for writing or creating a review for um, BookTube? Like you I read your well, this books. is perfect. I don't write reviews, so this is a perfect question for me. I don't know if anyone you visited my channel recently, but I just don't review books. So uh, I'm going to learn <laughs> from everybody. Their process yes, you here. Do. For, you know, I really actually don't. I, I do more video essays about books than I do really really. I really watched books. your reviews of the Spiffbo finalist two days well, that's ago. That's because I'm in Spiffbo. And I like a lot before Spiffbo. You know what I Why mean? are you taking so long to finish that? Look, born. <laughs> keep refreshing the page to see the rest of your reviews, to see what you took the hatchet to. And have, you have, you, have you seen the Spiffbo scoreboard right now? Yes, you, you are one of the most full. Oh, I know. We I don't can't have any. It. She is the most, <laughs> she's the fastest so far. Full, yeah. Like beautiful, full list. No. I yeah, know. Yeah, any. Go faster. Uh, I'm sorry. I just have to put that joke in because I do feel like. Um, I don't write that many reviews. So I just wanted to make that joke, but um, you review stuff. You review yeah, books. I, 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 I do do a little review. And I was just laughing about that the other day because I looked at my channel and I was like, wow, when's the last time like I reviewed a book besides SPFBO? Bookborn um, writes really long scripts and then films things that people want to watch. So I, do, I, I do think it's interesting because you guys, um, three of you guys, are written media but how you put your stuff out versus mm -hmm. visual is very different. Um, so I'm actually curious to hear the differences between those because I wonder, do you guys ever get stuck just in edit mode? That's what I wonder with writing because you could just keep editing it forever. Whereas like for us, at least, I don't know, Alan, if you feel this, like once I filmed it, that's it. So like I'm in the editing room and if I'm bummed that I didn't say something at this point, the ship has sailed. There's only so much I can do. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Um, because... I mean Filming takes a while, so I'm not going to go reset up and refilm an entire review. Oh, yeah. So, like, if I miss it, I, I might go and do a voiceover after if it's like really vital. Um, but at some point, it's too late. And so, and I and I wondered for you guys who do written, do you ever get stuck just like continually editing it, or do deadlines keep you enough to just like let it go into the universe? I get stuck. I get mm -hmm. stuck. Like if I'm if I so I've written something if it's a really complicated book. And I look at it, I'm like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> this doesn't have any of the beats that I need to talk about. And then I'll edit, and then I'll edit, and then I'll edit, and then I'll edit. And at, at some point, I just have to let it go. Like, and it's hard. And you, and you always wonder, did I get across what I was really trying to say? Right? It's so mm -hmm. hard. Like, you, the thoughts from your head to the paper, your head to your voice, it, there's some sort of block there, some blockade. <laughs> and things just never quite it's so hard to communicate those things and especially when you worry about spoilers mm -hmm. giving too much away um i don't know it's it's a t it's tougher i think than people think to write like a good review and i think that's why so many people are like known for it when you read them they they're really good at capturing the essence of a book i'm in awe of you booktubers because you guys have to you know you're filming yourself you have to talk about how you know what you thought because when you're writing the reviews you can, you can kind of just break it down like okay characterization this is what we thought plot wise this is what we thought you know because it flows and you can okay, kids you can go back to re-edit it but with with when you guys are talking about it when you're when you're writing your scripts you kind of have to make it a flow a little bit you know a little bit easier as well because when you're writing it it's a little bit different but when you're filming and talking about it, you realize that this is not really flowing and all of that so that's why i, I kind of think like booktubers have it a little bit harder for mm -hmm. us at least like i can only speak for myself because for me the things stopping me are tired getting tired and being lazy yeah, uh, like it's that. like, how much more do I want to give this review? Because it's a, it's off my free time. B, it's already. I usually do my writing in that at night. So it's like, how sleepy am I, and what time are my kids gonna get up? Six a.m., five a.m. So it's like, it's I have to capture that. Like I, I can get five hours of sleep if I finish this right now, and then the scheduling and all of that on the blog. So I'm like, 
that's what keeps me compact. But it also depends on the books, right? Because sometimes you get these really fantastic books and you, you're writing, you're writing, and you realize it's more than 1,500 words. And you're like, I still haven't got to what I like about this book. And then you just got to go with what you got to go. Well, Bookborn is way more organized than I am. Like she has like stuff laid out. In, I am not organized when it comes to reviewing. I take notes like in, I have a little book journal thing that I just take like bullet points when I'm reading something. And then when I go to film it, hopefully I'm filming it somewhere like within the vicinity of having, um, having read the book. I filmed my Hero of Ages review eight months after reading the book because I never got around to it. So I had to go like reread the recap of what the, I'm like, oh, okay, now this, this bullet point makes sense. And so when I'm filming, I just try to, I try to lump the bullet points based on like category. So I'm not jumping like, Hey, I just talked about theme. Now I'm going to talk about a whole bunch of other stuff. Oh, let me jump back to theme or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Reviews are hard and they're the most tiring thing to do. So my biggest barrier is making myself do them. I don't want to do them because, you know, I work all day and I talk about stuff at school all day to students. And then I get home and I don't want to do it again. I just want to sit here and play The Witcher. I just what I want to do. Um, and, you know, if it's a TBR, it's fine. Hey, I'm reading this, y'all. Oh, you've never heard of it? Oh, big surprise. You know, like that's that's easy. I can do that sleeping. Um, so reviews are always harder. But and then when I'm editing them, I'm just like, what are you talking about, man? And so I'll cut out. I have pauses where I look at my next my next um, bullet point. Uh, and like uh, Bookborn said, if you forget something, I mean, I'll put up a graphic on the screen that says I was my first freaking my Mistborn review, my very first uh, Brandon Sanderson book review. I call him Brian Sanderson. <laughs> And I didn't catch it. I didn't even catch it in editing. I caught it when someone commented and said, I can't tell if Alan was joking because we had joked about that in Discord. And I didn't catch it. I called, I said, Boosh, The Final Empire by Brian Sanderson. And I just went on. Missed it when I edited it. Well, it's, so, you know what, Alan? We have all done stuff like that. No, like, yep. like seriously. Here, yeah. I I wrote a review for is it one of my favorite books last year. Mm -hmm. of oh, yeah, just just amazing. And I had this passionate review of how great it was. It was like a a hug and a book, and you know, and I never ever put stuff up on reddit i am terrified of reddit oh <laughs> reddit is a terrifying <laughs> place i agree with you <laughs> but i'm like okay reddit. i i can do this i'll put something up on reddit i misspelled his name two different ways in the review i misspelled his name in the title <laughs> did you spell it bald tree or something bald bald tree. yeah yes he did i spelled no. it bald tree and yes. then i spelled it blad bladry <laughs> <laughs> Travis Bald Tree and Brian Sanderson hanging out right <laughs> Brian Sanderson re writes and Travis Baltry you know narrates. It's the perfect combination. Yeah, Travis Bald Tree narrates. That's true. Oh, that's yeah, the, the issue, the the wor one worst thing about filming is um I like don't care about how I pronounce fantasy things like my whole life. Like I just read it and whatever. And people on YouTube care. Um, let me tell you. They care. And so that's been really hard, especially in fantasy, I feel like. Um, and I think what you said was spelling, like, gosh, when you're writing a fantasy review, you must have to look up 800 things because mm -hmm. you're just like, well, I know what I'm talking about, but okay, let me go see what how many apostrophes this location had and where they are. Um, yeah. So I feel like in some ways, fantasy has a uniquely, um, fantasy is uniquely difficult because we're talking about completely new worlds and magics. And so I think more goes into a review in terms of like you have to get the audience there for your review first you know when you think of lit fic or or other things um you're not working from the same mold so i do think there's some extra challenges that are uniquely in our genre space yeah i had to put a i had to put a disclaimer at the beginning of my most recent malazan review because everyone acts like they know how stuff's pronounced when they're guessing the same way that we are but i said i said look if you're gonna watch thir this 30 minute video and the only thing you have to say is the comment on the my pronunciation of something stop leave me alone and let me <laughs> let me talk about this video like 
why is that the only thing that you can say is well it's actually pronounced so it's so how do you know i've met the author and he told me i can pronounce it however i want leave me alone leave me alone i mean alan you know i saved that bit of video like i recorded it you saying that and saved it to my phone just so i can send it to people good I send it to here, anyone, I loved anyone it so knows. much i was like i'm just gonna keep this and the next time someone <laughs> bothers me i'm just gonna send them this video clip of alan leave talking. me alone exactly <laughs> Yeah, it's the Malazan, Malazan thing. Malazan. 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 So it's actually Malazan. That it's is. Malazan. But that, that's Stephen what, that's what Erickson care? told me. Yeah. Stephen I Erickson care, though. I haven't read it. I'm giving up my fantasy card. I haven't read it. No, well, don't. I read it it's okay. for like. It's okay if you don't read it. <laughs> I read it for 12 years before I ever heard anybody talk about it on BookTube or Erickson pronounce things correctly. So I had the way I was going to pronounce it, and I'm not going to change it. And yeah. Stephen Erickson doesn't care. He didn't care. It's everyone else that cares. Like, no, 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 it's, mal it's Malazan. No, I don't care. Guess what? Malazan. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. Like, oh. seriously. <coughs> Come at me. Do yeah, guys... review. Oh, sorry. Oh, go... uh, no, I was David, just going to say, yeah, re reviewing, reviewing for me is, is kind of changed forms over the years. Because, like, when I first started out, I mean, my, my reviews were only, like, you know, a couple of paragraphs and honestly those paragraphs weren't even full paragraphs they were like three or four sentences because i had no idea what i was doing i just said hey this book was really good i like this part if you like so and so i think you'll like it i mean that i mean it worked i mean you know i got a few views on it or whatever but um and then i started i don't know why i did this because i hate when other people do it uh i started kind of like walking people through the book like it starts out here and then it goes this way. And I'm like, I'm just telling people what the book is about. That makes no sense. Uh, and that's, uh, that's what I realized. I was like, you know, maybe people don't want a retelling. They just want you to, to tell them your, you know, your opinions. Um, and so I started, you know, kind of doing what here does, you know, you do characterization, you do setting, you do magic systems, you do world build, whatever. Um, and then I was like, you know, I don't have time for these long essay <laughs> reviews. So then I started really summarizing and going, okay, you know, People really like blurbs. It's concise. It's like this, the size of a tweet. I'm just going to make my blurb what I feel like is the best I could make it. And then I'll have some, you know, two or three paragraphs after it to, to go. I really like this part. I wish this had been done better. I look forward to this and the sequels or whatever. If it's the, you know, finale, then I'll say worth it, not worth it, whatever. Um, but I've just gotten to a point just with busyness with, life and work and children and about to have another you know child and I, I just do blurbs now I, I just don't I don't have time to sit there and think and go okay I have an hour to myself I could either be reading I could be I, I don't want to say playing the witcher because Alan's got that or playing God of War um, <laughs> or or you know sleeping um, and uh, and so I just get to the point where I finish a book and I go okay Let's let's get 140 characters as great as I can get it and throw it out and then go to the next thing. Um, and it, it seems to be working fine. I mean, I, I've gotten some retweets from publishers and stuff. So I'm like, okay, that seems to work out. I still do a ton of stuff on the blog. I do cover reveals all the time. I'll still do lists. I do the massive, most anticipated list every year, which is just hundreds of books. It takes forever. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, and, and you know, I... I kind of stopped doing reviews because I was doing author interviews all the time, which took up a lot of time. I, I didn't edit them just because I know how long it takes to edit Alan and Bookborn. I know <laughs> it takes forever. Um, and so I would just go, okay, we're going to record it. If we say something stupid, I'll edit it out. If I mispronounce the title, which I have done, I'm sorry, Ryan Cahill, um, uh, which I just, just kind of cut that out of that first one. Um, and, uh, you know, it just stuff happens. Life gets, you know, busy. Uh, and you just you just do the best that you can. Uh, and that's another reason why I brought on so many people. It's just I just don't have the time to produce content like people seem to want it, uh, and, and, you know, which is you know, every single day or every other day. Uh, and so I was like, OK, let's just have a combination. We'll throw out some reviews every few days. We'll throw out cover reveals every few days. And, you know, if, if it continues that way, great. If not, we'll change it up somehow. I do it. I do it a little bit differently. Um I do 500, I have to get 500 characters in, or 500 words. I work a lot on SEO for the site. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> I'll do like, I, I aim for 500 words. And in the first paragraph, I mention the name of the book because Google picks that up. You know, it, it'll, and you'll, you'll chart 
higher if you have something like that. And then I'll go through the beats of the book, you know, just as you guys do, characterization, world building. I'll highlight anything that really stands out. And then I will wrap it up and say if I recommend it or don't recommend it or whatever in 500 characters. So I think that's like a good, it's not too long. You know, it's a couple paragraphs, but long enough to get the point across. And the SEO works. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. SEO is pretty great. I mean, that's that's one reason we switched over to like a, a hosted site instead of doing WordPress, mm -hmm. because literally every single post we do, we you know have your top three SEO words, and then you can add some more. You can change out how it appears in your Google search. And it really yeah. does help you chart. I mean, if you just go and Google a title of a book and put fanfi at it, I mean, it's it's going to be there. Or if you just put you know, just the, just the, just the title of the book. I mean, we're probably going to be on the first page. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's so nice to have that ability uh, because, you know, used to, we'd be on the second, third, fourth page <laughs> and uh, yet we would have a blurb on Amazon, but it would just take so long to search for something. But, um, but yeah, those, those, that SEO is, is really nice. I don't know what any of those we're, words mean. SEO is search <laughs> engine optimization. We're, uh, we're switching over so, to Google. Sorry, words. Alan. <laughs> I very frequently have no idea what the words people are saying mean. <laughs> the, I mean, Alan, you and I have to deal with YouTube's algorithm, which is I don't. Than Google's SEO. Yes, you do, Alan. I, Even if I, you have, don't want to I have clicked on my are. analytics page one time, and that was to see when we compared the 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 genders of the of the people watching. Oh yeah, Alan and I have very different genders of people watching, which is why I think I have more angry people. But anyway, that's besides the point. Um, the um, yeah, the algorithm in SEO is very different. I actually worked for a company that did SEO. So like I had to go through like a whole training about SEO. So what, what does that mean? Search engine, Search engine optimization. No, you're telling me what it stands for. <laughs> what does that mean? Um, so Google Google has an algorithm. Google has a oh, way that they why deliver. Why does everybody have a stupid algorithm? Okay, look, Google's my favorite website because it answers Because we live questions. in the matrix, Alan. It, we live in the matrix. The only way that Google can answer your questions <laughs> is they have to use the keywords that you put into Google and try to decide what it is that you actually want and well, what they're websites they're going to serve to you. And so they there's things you can do to make sure that your website. So what David and Beth are talking about is, OK, if someone searches Legends and Lattes, you know, Beth wants her review to come up. And mm -hmm. so there are things that she can do within her website's coding or the way that she writes in her first 500 words to make sure that the title's there, that it makes it more likely for her to be served. Now, websites also gain capital. So like David, I think what you're saying is you probably come up a lot now because your website is big, bigger, and a lot of people go to it. So then your website for a review is going to be served up more than someone who just started because Google now knows that you're a trusted website for things like that. So Google keeps so track there of all those things. Code words you have to enter in. Yeah. Like Alan, if it helps. Yeah. I had no idea. I mean, I have an idea about it, but I don't do it. <laughs> and our our reviews come up the same way. Either it comes or it doesn't come. And it's 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 weird. It's one of those things which people either like like these folks, they know about it and they're doing it or well, so I think here's a perfect because, example. I think the here is, mis is misspelling last names. He's putting bald tree. In that, in yeah, that see, and that's going to hurt not you. showing up in Google. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's, here's a good example, Alan. So I tried, you know, Tress of the Emerald Sea just came out by Brandon Sanderson. I tried to get a video out really early. And I made sure that even though in my title, I put both titles. I put secret project number one and I put Tress because I wanted to come up. But I test these things and I was Googling it and my video was only showing up on the first page under trust and was not showing up under secret project number one. And I realized it's because I had accidentally put like numbers spelled out in the description box and not the hashtag number. And so it wasn't showing that up as a result. So I had to go and edit my description box a few times mm -hmm. to make sure that when people were Googling secret project number one, my video was in that first page of recommends. Now yeah. my video is gonna fall under Murphy's because Murphy has a way more capital than I do on YouTube. It's going to fall under anything Brandon Sanderson's posted about it because he has more capital. So that's the way it, it works so and by using keywords. Everyone watching, this is a do a how to and how to not have a book channel. <laughs> book porn is the how to. And I, who don't even know what that crap is, and someone just said it's kind of like tags on YouTube. What is that? Is that hashtags on YouTube? I, I've entered those in like two videos. I always you know, forget. Tax and then I'm like, is useful anymore. Is there? So, 
Yeah, I don't know when they were ever useful. <laughs> Years ago, before we got on that one, don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, Bookborn will tell you how to get people to watch your stuff. I don't know how to do that, so. <laughs> we're all in the void. We're all trying, right? It's we're all the trying Captain to get America people. Shield. I'm telling you, it's the Captain America Shield. It is That's the Captain America thing. Shield. It's the secret to my success. Everyone yep. go buy a Captain America shield. <laughs> um, well, it's also, so you talk about stuff like that people want to listen about, like, you know, Rings of Rings of Power or mm -hmm. Brandon Sanderson. Well, or sometimes I, I talk about what people want to hear about when it also aligns with my interest. Yes, and yes, um, that's, that's a what question. I mean. That's what I mean. But that's that's a question for everybody. I don't know if you guys feel that in book blogging. Do you ever feel the need to read or put out reviews or write things that you're not interested in because you think it will serve your blog? Or do you just ignore it because you're like, eh, I just kind of want to do what I want? Um, I can't read stuff I don't want to read. Like, I can't. It's so boring. Like, I, 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 can't, I can't. Okay, so I have Asperger's, if, case, if anybody, like, wasn't aware of that already. Like, I'm on the spectrum. So, you know, I... I get away with a lot of stuff. Like people are just like, oh, look, it's the autistic guy. Like it's fine. Um, so <laughs> I just can't, like I can't make myself do stuff I don't want to do. Like I, it's just, it's too hard. So because of that, I mean, I do feel super FOMO. Like when book five of, what is it? What is that? Stormlight that's coming out this year, book five, where, you know, in the month of November, booktube ceases to exist as everything is pulled into the black hole of stormlight and it's like me and like one other dude who doesn't even have a channel like standing behind a dumpster trying to stay warm because no one will let us inside like that's what it's going to be that's what it was like when rhythm of war came out and that's what it's going to be again so but i just like i don't have time to read all of stormlight i don't there's a stuff i want to read anyway whatever this is okay, where no. having a team, you know, yeah. because you can having have a team. people in your team who want to read Sanderson. Uh, I don't care for Sanderson. Oh, I need a uh, team. Yeah, you do. I know. I was actually, I don't know, <laughs> when they were they talking about their talking. teams, yeah. I was it's interesting that on a blog, um, teams are much more common. Mm -hmm. On a, on a booktube channel, it's more about creating an identity around one person, um, which team. is really interesting. because I want a team to make them read stuff I don't want to read. How big? How big are the teams? How big is your team, Mir and David? Uh, right now, it's you know, so we're all part of the same team. So it's Lucas, Caitlin, uh, David, Matthew, Sh Shazzy, and me. So about six people, and of course, we have some irregularly irregular people who mm -hmm. might post some review, but it's it's about four to five really active people and me. Mm. Uh, so. Bookborn, let's merge. Let's become a team. <laughs> the library of Bookborn. Yes. How big is your team now, David? Oh, gosh, I don't know now. Like we we've had we've had a few people scoot out. We've had a few people kind of do other things. I mean, I I think the last time I even took a tally, it was like twenty or twenty five. But uh -huh. but again, it's not it's not people submitting stuff every week. It's not mm -hmm. even every month. It's a lot of those folks are just like in a group. We all chat. We, we share each other's stuff. It's really just a community kind of thing. But we probably have, I'd say, 10 to 15 that regularly post content. I mean, you know, Adrian Adrian now does the podcast full time, which is also the YouTube channel. Um, and then we've got, you know, Justin running Escapist Book Tours, uh, which they've kind of taken a few of our reviewers to do reviews for that website now because um, he's done another one through uh, our mod host, Mod Farm. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I would say may, maybe 10 to 15 or regularly once a month, once every couple of weeks type, type folks. But, but again, I mean, we, we kind of like it that way. I mean, we like having a, a big space where everybody's ideas kind of flow and culminate, but that's so cool. It, it's fun. I mean, again, you know, I, I didn't do it just to be like, I want to make sure we have reviews every single day and everybody's reading and I'm just like, look, I want you guys to come have a good time, talk to each other, get to know each other. If you happen to read and review a book, great. We'll boost it. If Chiago, not, come join my team. <laughs> <laughs> Chiago is one of our SBFBO uh, authors, Finalist, by yeah. the way, if anyone who doesn't know. His book is great. Just Chiago's, Chiago's the best. I love Chiago. Chiago, we're on a team yeah. now. We'll see if Bookborn will take us. <laughs> I you, should seen, you should have seen him roasting Key in the other day on his 24-hour stream. It's pretty great. <laughs> be, be sure to Chiago's give some Chiago raisins. He loves raisins from what I hear. It's I hate raisins too, Tiago. <laughs> you hate raisins? What's wrong with you guys? Tiago yeah, doesn't like raisins, so. 
there's like six foods that I eat. I can't eat a lot of stuff. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> Would it upset people to know that cinnamon raisin is my favorite type of cookie, like oatmeal cinnamon raisin? Is that an of upsetting choice for people? That's, that's the it's most interesting thing I've ever heard you say. So have you ever played Borderlands? Do you know Borderlands? Dancing. Tiny oh, Tina. Dancing. Tiny Tina going off on, you know, oatmeal raisin cookies. That's what that reminds me of. It's, it's <laughs> Borderlands. It that's Borderlands 3, isn't it? Yeah. Or yeah. no, it's Borderlands 2. Oh, the second one? Gotcha. She has her tantrum and yeah. <laughs> Tiny Tina. Are you hearing that water's gonna come back on? That's from Borderlands. That's from the first one. Just talk to that guy repeatedly while my friends get very mad. Hey, you hearing the water's gonna come back on? I just talk to that one guy over and over. <laughs> hey, water's gonna come back on? And they're like, no. Sorry. Is this a game we're talking about? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a yeah, Borderlands. I have like a thousand hours on Borderlands 2. Good gracious. Yeah, oh yeah. Like I love Borderlands 2. Yes. Yes, it's the it's the 15th medal, Zach. <laughs> make sure, make sure, uh, Bookborn, you tell me how um how that particular medal works every time I ingest it. Um, um, it makes you um, spend more time researching than actually doing anything for your channel. And so it's going to make you less productive. So I don't want to do that, <laughs> Wouldn't recommend taking it. <laughs> no. I don't want to do that. Do you guys write negative reviews? I will. I will do it. But the thing is, okay, so, so, so here's the thing. Like, if you only, like, for, for, uh, booktubers. If we only say so, there's people who don't uh, mm -hmm. post negative reviews, like Philip, like Dr. Philip Chase, um, and people aren't coming to him for negative reviews. If Philip doesn't like it, he just won't post a review about it, which is one way to tackle it. Um, people always know what I'm reading, and so they always want to know, and they'll see my Goodreads. Philip doesn't use star ratings, so but if they see that I've rated something like two stars on Goodreads. You know, people can ask me why. So I don't have a problem posting a negative review, but you can be negative without being a huge douchebag. Like oh, yeah. there are people who are going to be negative. negative. Mm -hmm. Correct. They're just yeah. they're, they just going to be negative because they want to like they just want to like like <sighs> scorched earth and leave like leave it like because people really people will click on that like they will mm -hmm. like people will click on it to that's you know that's what that's why Twitter is like that because that's what gets circulated. But you can post negative by being like, there is a series that I should really love because it's my favorite subgenre in fantasy. But the seminal work in this, I don't like, but I like the world. And so, but I, I'm gonna read it because it's the most popular one. Like, but every time I read something in it, I'm just like, I just wish it was not this way. But I don't trash the author. I don't yeah. trash the things. I'm just like, I don't understand the decisions that are made in this book. It is not for me. And what do I know? Like this book has sold, you know, a million copies. What do I know? You know, like I haven't written a book, but it is not for me. And I can, and that's the harshest I've ever really been on anything. Oh, sorry. Lion of Macedon also, but that's just because it has someone in history doing something that they weren't there for. I'm like, what is happening in this book? Plus David oh, Gimmel. No, like, no, no, David <laughs> Gimmel. Don't talk like that. Look, David <laughs> Gimmel is an excellent writer. I'm not bad mouthing Gimmel, but in Lion of Macedon, Parmenian mm -hmm. was not there for any of those things. And he's taking the, the glory away from a I know, and I know. And I'm just like, what is going on with this book? That's my only problem. He's a great writer. Um, His publisher so, forced him to do that. Uh, just so you know, I'm also a huge David Gimmel fan. Hold on, are you serious? Yes, I'm not even kidding. So, sorry, sidebar for uh, Line of Macedon. For later. Multiple. We yeah. must talk about that later. Sorry. Definitely. Um, but yeah, so I don't want to, like, that's not who I am. Like, if people tune in to watch me, like, complain about stuff. I don't know why people like watching me complain, but they do. But I'm not, I'm not complaining in a mean way or... I'm not actually, I just have a lot of indignation about things, but I'm never mean because I don't want to be mean. That's not who I am. I'm not a mean person in real life. I don't want to trash someone else's work, you mm -hmm. know? That's but their baby. Book, yeah, you every know? book That's isn't for baby. everybody. Like, yeah. if I don't like it, who cares? A bunch of other people like it. What do I know? My opinions are bad. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know, I, I don't. I wouldn't say I necessarily wrote a negative review. I'll just say I, I, it wasn't a gleaning review on certain books. Um, I feel you know negative criticism is is needed because 
what you don't like, somebody else will love and vice mm-hmm. versa. I mean, uh, there's a book uh, called I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reed. Uh, that book is so hot and cold uh, anywhere you go. I mean, I think it's like five out of 10, but they're like, so many people loved it and so many people hated it. I loved it because I went and looked at the reviews and I said, okay, let me look at the people that I actually like think their opinions are valid and I actually believe them uh, versus the people that are just like, I read five pages of this book was crap. So here's one star. Um, but I end up loving it. Uh, but I just generally, if, if I'm not enjoying a book, if I get, you know, 50 pages into a book and I said, this is, it just isn't for me. I'm not going to push myself to finish it to then have to go write a review because then I'm just going to be like, Oh gosh, what am I going to say without like being a jerk, whatever. I just, I just, this book isn't for me. Move on. There, there are so many books that will be for me that I have yet to read and I need to get to. Um, but I do, I do believe negative reviews are needed because if you're just positive all the time, people aren't going to believe you. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I mean, you know, like in Phillips thing, you, you, you can have positive reviews and you can just that be your thing. Uh, because that's what you read and that's what you enjoy and that's what you want to talk about. I don't really like talking about negativity, but that's what spreads everywhere. And yeah. that's like Alan said, that's what gets clicks. I mean, mm-hmm. even if it's a booktube video that says these are the 10 more series, of, you know, ever or whatever, of 2022, and then it ends up being a video that's all positive. Like, but it, the negativity, the screen cap is what's going to get you to click on there because you just want to know what they're going to grind into. Um, it's just, I don't, I don't personally get it, but it, it seems to work. Uh, it's just not for me. I I think there's a lot of different elements to a negative review. First, I think negative reviews are very useful to a reader. If we take even just book blogging out of it, I found it very cathartic as a reader to not like a book and be able to go see other people say the same things I did. Um, uh, a book I recently, I read like a Hugo winner and, there's just one thing that drove me insane about this book and to see other negative reviews be like, Oh, that thing, thing bro- drove other people insane. It can be very cathartic. Um, so I think there is this place for negative reviews mm-hmm. just in the reader community. But I think as reviewers, um, there, I, I, I have two different categories. I, I would call punching up and punching down. You know, if someone wants to go write a really nasty rant or not nasty, but like if someone, someone wants to do a kind of funny rant review about one of the most popular authors of all time, I view it a little differently than someone who's doing this horrible rant review of a very unknown author. I'm not saying it hurts less, but you know, if someone wants to be like, I hated a Brandon Sanderson book, is that really hurting his bottom line? No. You know what I mean? No, that's my point. And so I think um, I I try to be cognizant of that. Like when I read a self-published book, you know, I read a self-published book I really didn't like, but when I reproach that review, I am going to approach it so much more carefully than when I said, told people I didn't like The Witcher. The Witcher, does, who, no one cares if I don't like The Witcher. Who am I to say I don't like The Witcher, one of the most popular fantasy books of all time? Who cares? But, I mean, you know, in the self-published care. community... What, what is Geralt to you? In the self-published community, you know, when I didn't like this book, I made sure to be very clear about what I thought people would like. Uh, the type of reader who would like it Mm -hmm. and say maybe why it didn't work for me. I I'm just so much more careful about it because I respect so much how hard it is and how one review could really damage a book like that, even from someone small. And so I do think, you know, taking your tone into consideration um, when you're thinking about who and what you're writing it about um, can make a big difference. And it's something I always, you know, try to keep in mind. I read my process is that if it like I'll get 50 pages in just like David if it's not if it's not working for me I'm gonna put it down I have a whole stack of books that I've put down that now my TBR I need to work on that I finish every book I read which is another reason I'll do negative reviews because I I finish them so I'm gonna talk about it I I can't (laughs) (laughs) and then you know if it's it I, I write a review if it's three stars or better because I, I, you know, because I, I can constructively talk about it. Hey, this book wasn't for me, but I know that this book will sing for, you know, the people. And I'll say the reasons why and go from there. Because, you know, not every book is for every reader. And I just, it's still a good book, just not for me. Yeah. Well. I'll, I'll only say this, like, because you all covered so many good points. There are people on Goodreads and maybe on YouTube as well. I don't know about them. But on Goodreads, I've seen there are certain reviewers who love to trash books. And that's their shtick. Like they yeah. will just create these really cool. nasty, but you know, fun to read reviews. 
They're just trashing stuff and good for them. They will get a lot of, you know, people who follow them for that. But there's an art to writing a negative review, you know, like a book Barn said, like where it kind of highlights certain things. Why, you know, from a, your subjective perspective, that it didn't work for you. Maybe it might not work for some other readers as well. And, you know, you can try to write that. Uh, it's not something that we, and it's something that our, you know, owner at Fantasy Book Critic, he has kind of this ethos of like, you know, that we usually do not publish negative reviews. If you do not write the book, stop it, post it on Goodreads or under your own name or don't review it. That's absolutely okay. You ideally want to yeah. uh, post reviews which are constructive and positive usually. Uh, it's very rare for us to publish them. And so even I've only done one negative review and even then the author didn't kind of got pissed off at me because of, of, I posted in a certain way in Goodreads. And so I was like, okay, that teaches me. So I usually try to, again, similar to you, Beth, it has to be at least three stars for me, for me, mm-hmm. you know, for me to go forward with it. And I'm, I've learned to be nowadays a book dropper. I, if I'm not enjoying it, I'm going to set it aside. Previously, I was like Hillary that I would try to finish it. That's why I finished Ayn Rand's book. So I could tell people that I hate Ayn Rand. And this is why I had read one of her books. <laughs> but then nowadays I'm like, I'll read what? There's trains and steel in Atlas Shrugged. Oh, it's not good. Oh. There's a lot of trains oh. and steel. I love trains. I didn't read, <laughs> read Atlas Shrugged. I read the other one, though, which was the other one about them. the fountainhead. I, 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 yeah, I mean, I read but I may one. be pickier about what I pick up than other people. Like, I, I am much pickier about what I pick up because I know I'm going to finish it no matter what. Um, and so I definitely try try less. Like, if I think I there's a chance I won't like it, I try not to to mess with it. Plus, SPFQ taught me, if you don't like it in the first page, you can move on to the next one. That has mm-hmm. kind of been reinforced over the last eight years, over and over and over again. So now I've definitely become better like that. Yeah. Yeah, and see, and I, and I don't post opinions like on a lot of different spaces. Like I, I I gave up on Amazon after they bond my account. Like I was in the top like 2K of reviewers oh, on Amazon and they completely bombed my entire review account. Uh, and so I was like, well, I don't think I'm going to be doing anything on Amazon anymore. Uh, and then I uh, decided just to stop doing it on Goodreads as well because it just kind of got to a point where I was just seeing people just trashing everything. And I was like, eh, there's no real point in being on here anymore. So really it's just the site in Twitter, uh, mm-hmm. which Twitter again is just a blurb. Um, and so I'm like, well, you know, I'm not going to be posting it everywhere. So if, again, if I just don't like it, I'll just move on. Um, Cause I don't know. I just don't see a point in just going, I don't like this book. Cause if, if somebody has my same reading taste, I mean, there might be parts about it again that they like, but I'm not going to go into like a full diatribe of this is what didn't work for me. It's going to work for you. Cause again, I just don't have the time for it, but, Again, a lot of the books that I read and finish are ones that I enjoyed enough to say a few words about and move on. Um, but again, that's just come after doing this reviewing thing for a decade. So I think I just got to the point where I'm just like worn out. <laughs> from <laughs> it. So I'm just like, there's so much stuff I have to read and just not enough time in the day. So you read I, I just want to respond a lot of books. I try. <laughs> I was going to say someone in the comments, Urza, I don't think we're cutting self-pub slack. I don't think any of us would say that. Like, I, yeah. I review yeah. very honestly. It's just there's a tone shift that I make sure that I have. And I think that's the difference. I, I've given self-pub books two stars. Mm-hmm. Um, I did it during SPFBO. But I also mm-hmm. recognize that the person who chose it for me to read gave it five stars. And that's a very easy thing to put in a review and say, hey, but if you think you might like it, go check out this person's review that that's what I'm talking about more than I'm not lying to my consumer more just it's a tonal shift I think when you're doing a negative review as Alan was saying it's the difference between just like trashing something and uh being polite about it I think goes a long way yeah I agree and even even like a three-star review is still it's still good Mm -hmm. well three stars is average yeah yeah I mean it's not (laughs) it's not bad you know you're not you're not trashing it and stuff. It just wasn't the perfect book for you as a reader. But it's well, still- and and us three as SPFBO reviews, we're gonna read stuff we don't like. It's just it, it's going to happen because mm-hmm. we're not choosing the books. We are given ten books to read, and we're gonna have to talk about things we don't like. But I think everyone, for the most part, is pretty nice and and just kind about it. And that's you know, I don't. Very few people are gonna have to read an SPFBO review. I think that's gonna like go home and make them cry. Well, hopefully, like, you know what I mean? Like, I have to give bad reviews, but I hope if they read, if they, the author listened, I think if the author listened to this, how would they feel? And I, I just think that way, because it's more mm-hmm. likely that they're going to see that review 
And so I think they, that's the difference. They're plotting your demise. They've printed out a picture. <laughs> print it on the <laughs> throw it, uh, I'm sure. And... I'm sure there's some people <laughs> in this SPFBO that don't like me very much, and I'm sorry because I love all of you guys. You're the nicest. Because you take your hacks off too. But that's that's SPFBO. I mean, like <laughs> it is, you know, yeah. it's that's the nature of the competition, bag. Mark. Mark Lawrence talks about this. There's a 3% success rate and yeah. ultimately out of the one out of 10, it's only one out of 10. So it's absolutely okay. But again, like everybody says, like even Bookborn, and I believe it was Ursa who's talking about this, like we don't treat the self-published books with kid gloves, but we do treat them with slightly different respect because it's a self-published author who has put their you know time, effort, everything in getting the published. So we don't really, like, we won't call it like a bad book, a good book, but we will not... You know, we won't just go to outright call it out of saying that this is absolutely horrific. No, nobody's going to do that. At least I hope nobody's going to do that. So, so there's mm -hmm. that part as well. Chiago, I was so nervous. Like, I'm so glad she finally came out with it because I was so nervous. I was going to see like a like a two on that little spreadsheet, um, and I was going to be like, <laughs> how do I choose between my friendship between Hillary and Chiago because it's been threatened <laughs> right here. Like, like will one of them get custody on the weekend or or what? I didn't know. <laughs> But, no, I really liked Chiago's book. Fortunately, it's saved. Thank goodness. That was a good gonna review, book Well, Going to read the Doesn't... sequel. So that's all you the need to know. People so know good. me. I never, that's pretty good. I never read sequels. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I'll drop a series at any time. That's the thing, because I don't DNF books. I DNF series all the time. Like The sequel's good. You've already read it, Alan? Look at you. Getting an art <laughs> copy. <laughs> I w like, I thought that I was Chiago's go-to guy. And so, like... I was like, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to like, you know, help out and read the arc. No, he's like, oh yeah. So four other people have already read this. Here is your fifth, you have a fifth one. I don't care about your opinion anymore because I already got it from four other people who are more important than you. And I like them better than you, Alan. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah, there's some, there's some venom there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look. Chiago and I have a tumultuous relationship. <laughs> but I love Chiago. So what is, talking about books here, what's the last great book that you guys read? Like the most recent one? Mm -hmm. uh, Tyranny of Faith by Richard Swan. Yep. Um, I love Richard. Like Justice of Kings is one of those books that, because I love framed narrative. I love books that deal with the law and justice. And I like I just really liked it. It's like, you know, fantasy law and order, which one of my friends says why he doesn't like it. I'm like, what do you mean you don't like it? Fantasy law and order. Are you kidding? Fantasy Jack McCoy? Yes. So <laughs> it was so good. And I was excited about the sequel and I read it and it was also really, really good. Very different, like very different. It's not the same as the first book. So it was it's like it's like different. And I mean, just in the in the type of story it's telling the second one um but it was it was excellent i haven't finished it but i'm gonna say this one the 11 cycle by kian ardalan oh, it, is, cool cover. it is amazing the co cover is yeah, good cool really cover. good but the book is even better it I, it's a chonker as well i had that's why i haven't finished it sorry kian uh, <laughs> I, I read it in parts but it is it is going to be on so many people's best off list i feel by the end of this year cool. uh but if anybody wants to know about last year last year was this book sons of darkness if if you ah, haven't read yes. this one please 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 give it a chance this is indian grimdark fantasy focusing on the epic of mahabharat which is and what the old largest epic and the second oldest epic and it is dora mahanti can do no wrong for me he was my he was my pick for um gdm's uh yes. big author coming out yeah uh, anitha is reminding me the most the most recent book i loved is not that it's imperium which is the first book in the cicero trilogy by robert mm -hmm. harris which is also a framed narrative but it's historical fiction so it's law and order in ancient rome instead of fantasy law and order they're basically <laughs> the same and i love both of them so much they're so good um anyway <laughs> what about you david I mean, Alan and, and me here kind of took both of them. I mean, Tyr Tyranny oh, is the yeah. one that I finished, and Eleven Cycle is the one that I'm uh, I'm blurbing next week. But yeah, it's if you if anybody reads Berserk like manga or uh, or really enjoys Dark Souls, Eleven Cycle is definitely like gonna be your cup of tea. Um, and yeah, Tyr and Tyranny of Faith was just phenomenal. Um, I, I, I'm a big fan of Richards. I, I, I had a chance to interview him right before Justice came out, and uh, he's just a great human being. He's also 
really, really funny, which is he's a great follow on Twitter. So he is he is a master of the gift game. So he will respond to anything in gifts and he's a master of it. Two, he and I share a love of military logistics. So we love talking about how to supply an army, like how you, cause that's, this stuff is rarely written about in fantasy. So we both love that. And three, he is a horrible person because he shoots Erdnot Rex in the first Mass Effect game and has no remorse about it. So those are my three fun facts about Richard. <laughs> you must love KJ Parker then. Yes! Ah. Oh <laughs> Here, you have read KJ Parker? Yes, the folding no one one reads KJ Parker. That's all Alan talks about is KJ Parker. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, you're now best friends. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Did we just become best friends? I think we just became best friends. Like, <laughs> I've read his five standalones, and last year I read every novella, every novella he has. I'm starting his series this year. He is he is one author who should be as famous as Malasan. But unfortunately, he's not. Thank you. That like, oh my gosh, my my number two book of last year was The Company. So that good. Is, it is. And The Folding Knife is one of still one of my favorites. He writes anyway. He just, yes, I love fantasy logistics. Mahir, we have to talk more. Oh my we gosh. Do. <laughs> <laughs> I found my soulmate. Um, I just finished uh, Shauna McGuire's new Wayward Children book, mm -hmm. and it's. It's just uh, everything she touches is good. Like I, I've never read anything by her that wasn't absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah I am um, gonna cheat. Need her give me the permission to cheat. I'm not done with this book yet. I'm currently reading it, but I'm three fourths of the way through, maybe more, four fifths. Um, but speaking of Malazan, I'm reading Gardens of the Moon and um, really, really, really liking it. Uh, enjoying it quite a bit. Um. And before that, I will say my favorite SPFBO read so far, since I've been reading them all in a row, but that's all I've been reading, um, was <laughs> A Song for the Void. So I highly recommend that one. Yes. Um, yes. Really love A Song for the Void. Um, it's not, if you had told me I was going to like, if you just gave me that on paper, I would have been like, mm, this book is not for me. So, uh, you know, if you, if you, it's, it's horror, it's naval, it's historical. Those are mm -hmm. like three things I'd say bottom my list of fantasy things I like. Hey, but um, a book. It mm -hmm. is very good. Um, just really. Early 19th century, it. set in the South China Seas. It's the first horror fantasy fan of, in finalist to be in the, in the last eight years of SPFBO. It is truly an amazing book. Yeah, it's just um, really well written. So I always like to, um, and you know, Chiago's in here and I really liked his book too. I'm reading the sequel. So you can, you can go, uh, that one I read a little bit ago though. So not as recent. <laughs> I know no one likes naval fantasy, Chiago. <laughs> Oh no, Tiago! Yeah, don't say so great, that. Alan. Go read a song no, for the void. It's naval fantasy. I hate naval fantasy. I'm and I going like it. to. It's, it's a <laughs> meme here. Like it, it is a meme. People will get on and they will review things and they'll be like, "Look, they'll review." So they're reviewing Live Ship by by Hob or Red Seas Under Red Skies, and they'll say this. Every one of them. Direct quote. So. I normally don't like naval fantasy, but, and I'm like, what nautical fantasy are you reading? As if it's such a huge subgenre that like every third book is a nautical fantasy. I'm like, which ones have you read that you didn't like? I, Here's I the thing, Alex, we haven't, from. because Rogue is saying it's me, but it's not. I've never read a naval fantasy. I just assumed I wouldn't. See, I think that's what happens. People hear boats and naval, Why? and they're just like, that sounds boring. Why does that sound boring? <laughs> that sounds awesome. No. <laughs> Paul Kearney has written some of the best naval fantasy books. I'm reading. I just finished. I just finished Hawkwood's Voyage, Mahir. Oh dear God, Alan, you and I really need to talk more. What is going on, Mahir? Okay, well, so I'm. I'm not. I haven't. I'm not up on naval fantasy at all. Don't worry. I, everyone hates it. So with like the um, aeronauts, win, aeronautical windless. Yeah, the the aeronautical windless. Yeah, aeronautical yeah windless. that was really great. So I, I've read that one. <laughs> Yes, that was fantastic. I, I think he's coming out with a sequel finally this year. He is. Yes. I think more that people should talk about Dresden Files is, is amazing, but his other books are just as good. His fantasy series is amazing. Oh, Codex Alera. He's yeah, also, Codex, that is really, Codex that is really Alera. Fun as well. mm -hmm. Also, um, I think one of the winners of SBF Pure has Rob J. Hayes' book, uh, Where Loyalty is Like. That was a nautical fantasy as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, I think the the weird thing is that is like every chapter is based on the ship's name in the in that book. Hmm. So, 
That's why you got to read more nautical fantasy. <laughs> Look, I love stuff that takes place on ships. I'm a huge fan of like ancient Greek history, and that's all about freaking naval battles, <laughs> random crap with triremes. <laughs> oh, and uh, just a plug in for the TBR con. I think there's a reading which is going to up, which is upcoming from Dirk Ashton, uh, Kraken Rider Sea, also a nautical fantasy. So for people who what? don't like it, yes, it's a dragon Kraken Rider Sea. It's like about a Kraken Rider in a Dragon Rider school. Set in the world, which is mostly nautical. A kraken rider? Can you? Is a kraken a rideable animal? Obviously, you gotta find out. That's <laughs> really there's a book about it. Yeah. Obviously, and John Marco is coming out with a freaking book. It's yep. got ships on the cover, so that's gotta court. be good. I'm so excited for that one too. The, okay, the this kind of leads into the next question. Do you guys have <laughs> authors that you champion? Like mm -hmm. authors that you tell. Yeah, I know. I, Alan, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think we know Alan's at this point. It's AJ Parker. No one, like, he has, the, no one will read him. And I understand. Like, you'll read it. And it's like, man, this book is so boring because nothing's happening in it. But it is, he is so good at showing the, it's showing the banal, like, evil of man. Like, his characters aren't like supervillains. They're just really bad humans and they're very like like full of like tragedy and you know at the end i'm just like man how horrible but his writing style is so like witty and the way like his command of the english language it reminds me of like pratchett if pratchett was like se like meaner yeah. yeah more cynical meaner, meaner like, a, like a more cynical pratchett with the writing style because it's he's saying these you know, terrible things, but it's just like, it's so just fun. I like the way he says it. And he writes, we see this a lot, fantasy readers, you are told how brilliant a character is. And then we watch them and I'm like, I mean, okay, like I can do that. Does that mean like I'm brilliant? <laughs> KJ Parker, I have never, I have never read someone write a more intelligent character more believably than KJ Parker. Like the first one I read was The Folding Knife and it's a guy who runs mm -hmm. the country so. and, and the bank. And I think about this character almost every day because it is the most intelligent character I've ever read. And it's just such a skill. Now, there are things that he does over and over and people's complaints about him. I do understand. He is not for everybody. I do get that. But what he does well, I don't know anybody that does it better. So that's my pitch for KJ Parker. It, he's written so many books and – at least he's getting a little bit of traction with his the Orbit series, um, 16 Ways to Defend a Wall City. Like that is his most like yeah. popular series. Um, but I have not read it. I've only read the standalones and the novellas and the novella collections. So I just happen to have his books on my shelf. I'm reading the Engineer Trilogy this yeah, year. I just I just happen to have them. I, I didn't buy them. I don't that know. One's really I dark. <laughs> that one's really dark, Beth. It's really dark. It's oh, I like really good? dark. Who are you talking I didn't to? Like that's that's, that's, that's you my didn't favorite thing. thing. Mahir, you didn't yeah, like it. That's my thing, man. Those Bring ones, no. Dark. I like his Swordsman uh, trilogy much better than these ones. Okay, I have those uh, too, but yeah, those I just love ones. Parker, and no one else. No, no one else is even. No one. No one likes him. No one. If likes you like him. Breaking Bad, it's like Breaking Bad in fantasy form. That's KJ Parker for you. Oh, it's okay. it's very is, low fantasy. Very this low. Sounds fantasy. really good. There's almost no really fantasy good. at all, and he will not. He will not draw a map. So he yes. uses the exact same places in every oh, every story, every novel, but you just. You'll hear like, oh, the Vasani Republic. You don't know where that is or what it's close to. Like, he ain't going to draw you a map. He's just not. So, but it, there's there's almost no, there's a little bit of magic, but very, very little. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. I get really excited talking about Kendrick Parker. Clearly. <laughs> David, David, what about you? Do you have to uh, Michael, Michael Fletcher. Uh, he's, oh, yeah. He's, he's too yeah. got me into I had this to book too. <laughs> fantasy, grimdark, all that stuff. Uh, his Beyond Redemption novel is just like, it, it's the perfect book for me. I, I tell everybody who's like, I need a recommendation. That is the book to read. I mean, there are no redeeming qualities in it. You're going to hate every single character in it, but there's just something about it. That's just so freaking phenomenal. And it's, it's a reread every year. Uh, he's working on the third book in that series. He originally published beyond redemption with Harper uh, and then self pub the second book called the mirror's truth. Um, but my gosh, that book is so good. And he just, just, he just doesn't get the credit that he deserves. I mean, his series are always just, just so freaking crazy, but so good. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's, cool that's magic my system. Yeah. The magic system and Beyond Redemption is really, really cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Come here. What about you? I feel like I've talked a lot. I, I'm going to let Book Barn go before. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'd say Ken Liu, uh, mm -hmm. someone I've championed a lot recently. Um, just I just feel books. like, oh, yeah, you got them all. Um, I got them all. I mean, I guess ever he's not underrated as everyone else is saying. I mean, like he did win a Hugo for his short story or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like people just like don't know who he is in general fantasy. And as someone who's traditionally published, I just don't understand like he's why amazing. his Dandelion Dynasty hasn't just taken off more. Um, I just he's a super smart guy, just one of the most interesting people to talk to. And um I just love the Dandelion Dynasty. His short collection of stories is devastating. If you just like reading books that devastate you, his short story collection is uh, devastating. And so I just wish more. I think it's he's starting to get picked up now that the Dandelion Dynasty is done. I feel like he's mm -hmm. talked about a lot more. But um, yeah, I just have been a huge champion of him uh, recently. I've, I've read his short story collection, and you're right. It's just. Is that the Paper Menagerie? Paper, paper yeah. Tiger yes. or something. Yeah. 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 Just rip your heart out. Really good. It's, I mean, literally rip your heart out. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, that's. I think. I mean, there's a lot of people I would say um, that I champion, but that's kind of the one that comes to mind. Real okay. quick shout out for Daniel Abraham and the Long Price Quartet. I love Daniel Abraham also, and Long Price Quartet's one of the best series I've ever read in my entire life. Sorry. <laughs> Ready to like Daniel Abraham only gets discussed in context with freaking The Expanse, and his fantasy is so freaking good. So dagger and the coin, dagger and the coin. So I love good. dagger and coin. Getter yeah. is one of the most complex, <laughs> well-written characters ever. I think I think Mahir's now on Alan's channel. I don't know if you guys <laughs> realize that. I think um, you guys now you have y'all are Alan. on the team. You guys so. are yeah, I just team joined now. Mahir's team. Like <laughs> boom, shutting the channel down. <laughs> Mahir, who are you champion? I want to know. Um, you made me go first. I have uh well, I have lots of favorites, but I'm just gonna pick five quite quick. Uh, people um craig schaefer uh rachel aaron uh rob j hayes richard nail and Dirk ashton these are my like you know recent five favorites whom i have like picked on and they continue to amaze me rob j hayes just because for his versatility the way he writes in so many different genres um shout out to his book for he's starting a new epic fantasy with angels in it for called herald next year it's releasing next year i really think all of you should check it out it's going to blow your minds Richard Nell, just because what he did with Ash and San, you know, with his, you know, the, the, the barbarian meets Hannibal Lecter character called Ruka in it, and the Ash and the way the Ash and Zan trilogy progressed, it is truly, truly brilliant. Like if if you if you guys if anybody loves Grimdark Fantasy and if you haven't read Richard Nell, you have to read it. Um, Dirk Ashton, I know Beth and I share this passion for him. He <laughs> has he's the only other whom I know has kind of combined the world's mythology into one coherent timeline and he has done it and this pattern trilogy is just brilliant and it's amazing and i cannot never speak enough you know good things about it mm -hmm. uh rachel Aaron, just because she's so much fun she writes she writes brilliant kind of you know women characters but also male characters but she, her her you know her the fun she generates in her books no matter where she sets in it's so invigorating for me and craig schiffer because he or i mean she mm -hmm. uh she writes how do I put this? She writes dark, darker stories, but with just enough of a hint of passion behind it that it, you know, doesn't really make it seem too gloomy. And she combines horror and different, different genres. And she has Daniel Faust, you know, and she's she has this big Stephen King esque universe going on, but it's so much more complicated than that. So these are my five authors. You know, I just love to champion them all day long. Um, you know, I I love Dresden Files, Jim Butcher. Yeah, but he doesn't need any champion. He's kind of <laughs> he's he's got his his people. Um, actually, the, the the two people that I talk about ad nauseum actually are um, my man. Yes, <laughs> my man Dirk Ashton. I can I feel like I run his fan club. <laughs> I love his books. I, I love this series. Um, it's just such a cool concept and it's executed so well. And it was exciting to read. You know, I haven't read a book that was actually exciting to read in a long time. And it, he ended it so he ended it well too. It was just, it was mm -hmm. just great. And the other, the other series that I champion a lot is um, uh, Nothic Gloss. You guys ever read 
S. A. Hansen's oh, books. Yeah. yeah, this is this is probably one of the best um, science fiction series I've ever read. I've read a lot of science fiction, and I think it's just that her take on world building and stuff. It's just anything goes, you know, creatures made of of sound and 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 light, and it's beautifully done. And she released Nothic Gloss in the middle of the pandemic. And so it didn't get the fanfare that it should have. You know, she couldn't couldn't go to bookstores, couldn't um, do all of that. And it was, it was a real bummer because I loved it. I really loved it. And then she has a second book in the series, Azura Ghost. And then she's releasing the third book this year. I actually, um, she has a great short story uh, that I put in uh, Grim Dark Magazine for this for this uh, issue. It just fit perfectly. So we, uh, we did her um, short story. Yeah, so yeah, I, I have lots and lots. And everybody on my team, every writer on my team, I try to boost as much as possible. They're all awesome. They're all great writers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, how do you manage your TBR? It's my last question, because I don't. <laughs> my TBR, I've given up. My TBR in Goodreads is like 3,000 books. I don't. I, think I really so. like to take Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, be what you go first, because he's Lord TBR. So, you know. <laughs> I don't oh, yeah. Yeah, David. <laughs> Sorry, Your Majesty. Go Google Sheets. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I do it. Uh, I just color code and go, okay, what do I need to get to now? What can I get to by middle to end of the year? And what can actually wait, you know, some time like series that are already finished and people really aren't reading anymore uh, can obviously wait. But, you know, I, I do that most anticipated list at, at the end of every year. So that kind of helps me figure out when books are coming out you know when okay i'm like okay it's arcs are usually like six to eight months sometimes they're a little less depending on the publisher so mm -hmm. i know i've got some kind of leeway but really it's it's near impossible because every time you want to read something you're like gosh but i'd really love to reread that series um even though i re you know reread it five times it, it's it's that time of year it's time for that reread so it just <laughs> it just really destroys it so there's no legit way to do it um but you know you just you just read what you can, read when you can. Don't feel like you've got to keep up with everybody else. I mean, you're going to have FOMO no matter what because you're going to read a series mm -hmm. that everybody else read. And then somebody's going to go, hey, did you check this out? Like, no, nope. crap, no, what nope. the, maybe the end of the year, maybe. Because um, it ha it happens all the time. So uh, I just – I don't think there's a, a, a real – best way to do it, but it's really just keeping a list and going, okay, check that one off next. I try to hit stuff for, for publishing. Like I try to get stuff out so that it, you know, it can coincide with drop dates for, for books, but it's, it's a lot. I'm just, you know, I've got a life and stuff outside of all the things that I do. And it's, I'm a parent and you know, husband and it's a lot to keep up with. I read really slow. Um, and, and like Bookborn reads a book in like a day, like she's done like that. Like 400 pages. I read way less than everyone in the book community. Hey, 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 Bookhorn, how long did it take you to read um, The Lost Metal? How long did it take well, you to read Well, that's because it's a Sanderson book, and I've Hold got on. a deadline to match, Alan. Um, I don't not, read every book like that. i got to manage my Sanderson deadlines. The, the judge has ordered you to answer the question simply yes or no. Did you or did you not read The Lost Metal within 24 hours? The judge 24 hours? Did you or did you not? <laughs> Thank I you, Your Honor. We'll take the fifth. <laughs> so, we'll the fifth. But, okay, well then. All right. Um, so, what is, oh yeah. I like to tell people I'm going to read things and have them get excited and then not read those things because I couldn't get to them. I just I'm read trying. so slow. And buddy reads are the death of the TBR. Like buddy reads are literally the cannons outside the walls of the city, just blasting, just knocking holes in the TBR left and right. And, you know, you're plugging to fill it and you just can't because it's just like, but everybody else is reading it. I want to read that too. And so you buddy read stuff and then, you know, inevitably you change, you start reading it and then your friends 
like read the whole thing in like two days, but you're a slow reader. So you switch to buddy read, but then you didn't end up buddy reading it. And it's just sad. So I pick about six books a month to make on a TBR video. And I'm like, I'm not going to read all these. And y'all know I'm not, but I'm going to read from this. I will read at least a couple of them. And then arcs, arcs of the, you know, the freaking sappers that have tunneled under the walls and are suddenly inside. It's like, hey, you want to read me? And this I'm is like, exciting. Oh, you you yeah. want this? Yeah, exactly. So right now, why is freaking quarter one of 2023 arc season? I've got like freaking, I read two already. And now I've got three that I didn't know were going to hit now. And I'm yep. just like, well, like what? Like, what if y'all stopped all publishing books at the same time? Like, what if these did not all come out at the same time? <laughs> so I have to try to finish. And I foolishly agreed to read A Long Shogun, which is an amazing book. But it's like 800 pages long. We're doing it over <laughs> three months. So I only have to read like 400 pages of it this month. But it's just still like, you know, I try to wipe out Buddy Reads first because I usually have live shows to talk about those. So those are obligations that I have to get done. And then if there's time left, I'll read something that hopefully KJ Parker, basically. I'll read a KJ Parker book that I can get to. <laughs> so surprised. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I have um, I have a new author that I am digging. Do you guys know C.J. Tudor? Yep. Drift. Yep. I read her uh, uh, short story collection, and I have not read a better. I think that's the best short story collection I have ever read. That's saying mm -hmm. something. It's just fantastic. So I've got this to look forward to. Her first book was Blurred by Stephen King. That's how she came onto my radar. Yeah, Chalk Man. Yep. Oh. Yep. Bookborn. What about I'm your learning. TBR? Um, well, my TBR. I never release a TBR. It's a mystery. People don't <laughs> know. Don't I am it. not into TBR. I'm a mood reader. Um, it has been difficult. It's actually one of the things I've had to balance the most being on booktube. You know, booktube's a hobby. It's not a job, like it's a hobby. And one of the things is I don't want reading to become a chore because reading was my favorite hobby, which is why I started this. And so I have to kind of get rid of this pressure. Like I read so much less than most booktubers, I would say. They're reading two, 300 books a year. That's not crazy. even close. Not even close. Because I, I don't like audio books. My brain doesn't work that way. Um, don't even really read digitally. Just read um, paper books. So um, basically, if I have a commitment, I do it quick. So SPFBO is a commitment. I can't have it whole. I can't. I hate things over my head. So that's why I've just been like, Here's SPFB, I'm going to read it. If a Sanderson drops, I'm going to drop everything to read it simply because, I mean, I love Sanderson, so it's fun for me to do that. But yeah. there are some authors that are people love on my channel. I talk about a lot. So if they have a new release, I am going to drop something to read that um, pretty quick. You know, when, you know, I got an arc of the Dandelion Dynasty book. Yeah, I'm obviously going to stop everything and just read that right then. Um, but otherwise, it's just kind of whatever I feel like, what's, what I own, what sounds good. Like I just, I want to read for fun. And so I try to preserve that as much as possible, but I will say I, I do read a lot more now in the community because I want to be a part of it. So, um, you know, that's, uh, it's, it's hard to manage. I don't, I don't know if I do. I just don't have one. I guess that's the answer. I don't have a TBR. It's just with a wild west every time I finish a book. How come you never buddy read with me, uh, Bookborn? We're buddy reading a book in two days. Kyle. I always hear about you and Kyle buddy reading stuff. Who are you here's, reading Malazan with right now? Um, you guys want to know how to, if anyone wants to buddy read with me, here's um, how you do it. You ask. <laughs> That's it. You Very DM technical. me and go, hey, you want to read this Very book? Technical. And I'll be like, sure. So, so, so every time um, you hear Bookborn, she says, I'm super busy. I don't have a room for that. That's what she said to me. Like, <laughs> every no. time. Alan, Alan was upset DJing. the other day. And I said, Alan, you've never asked me. And he was like, oh, yeah, because I assume you're busy. And I was like, no, well, there you go. That's not true, Hillary. I have to <laughs> you always tell me you're busy. And then Kyle comes in and's like, hey, uh, Hillary, what if we read Malazan together? And you're like, sure, I'll commit to a 10-book series. But I can't read one thing with Alan. <laughs> and we're actually reading Django Wexler's books this month. Um, I've Who? never read. Never mind. Uh, that's, sorry. 
That's you and me, Alan. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I stopped. That's why I stopped. Um, which I'm really excited about. I actually get to interview Fonda Lee and Django Wexler for nice. an in-person oh, event. Oh, amazing. Um, I got asked by our local bookstore to do that. So um, I hadn't oh, actually kudos. been on my um, radar forever and I haven't read them. So I actually asked Alan because I was like, I know he loves him. So I'm very excited to uh, read I love that. his shadow campaigns a lot. I am... Um, I, uh, Ashes of the Sun is, is fine. It's not, it's not exactly my thing. And I'm listening to it again on audio to, cause we're, cause she hasn't read it. And we're going to do the second up. book. Yeah. Yeah. I need he, to. Alan recommended Ashes of the Sun cause I'm a Star Wars person. I don't know if that means yes. anything, but they were just Star like, Wars well, then you'll like Ashes. <laughs> so For sure. I don't know if you guys um, have read any of that, but. So yeah. is the is the Django Wrestler and, uh, and Fondali thing like an in store interview or is it? It an is an in store in the same um, where we actually met in that same store. Me here, I can message you the cool. details. Yeah, I got to meet awesome. you here. Please How exciting! Store, so. Are you in? Are you are you in the same city? She, I think they're northwest, north of us. We're in Seattle. Yeah, we're in Seattle. Oh. I, I lived up. In, I was living in Portland for like the last twelve years or so. so you could have come on up. I, I know. I and I moved to Las Vegas. I had to move back home to Las Vegas. We briefly shared Portland for like a few months and then I she know. had to move. I had to oh. move. Yeah, I, I was, we really wanted to get together and have lunch or something here and I, but it was in the middle of COVID. Yep. The most yeah. embarrassing story I have it involves me here is when he, he came to, my husband did a book signing at this local bookstore and he was like, oh yeah, I, I knew you were here because I heard you from across the uh, bookstore. Like I heard your voice. And I was like, well, that's not terribly embarrassing. He's like, no, you just have a very distinct loud voice. And I, was like, I did okay, not great. say loud. I did not say loud. I said so you I didn't say you loud, here. but I inferred loud. So no, um, it was distinct because I heard you on your YouTube channel. So like, nice. you like, that's her. That has to be her. So now I can't meet anyone else ever again from the book. I would have said loud so. before. I would have said loud. <laughs> the thing is, I'm loud also. Yeah. Like, I shouted into this microphone like 12 times. Yeah. So, I honestly said distinctive when I mean, meant it, not loud. No, I know, I know, I know. I just well, like to tell that story in the rudest way possible because it was a little embarrassing. But, um, yeah. Plus, I peeked just to make sure it was her. And that was <laughs> well, that's it for questions that I have prepared. I know we've. We've really gotten some some great topics today. Um, does the audience have any questions or anything that they would like to know? Sorry, we ran long. Oh, it was it was awesome. <laughs> I blame I blame book forum. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that's that's all that I have, and I was really honored to to do this panel with you guys. This was so much fun. It was so nice meeting y'all. Yeah, I really appreciate you doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Beth. Yeah, you're going to, I'm going to start commenting on your guys' videos. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah thank you. Absolutely. So, Beth, where, uh, where can we find you? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, you can, you can find me on beforewegoblog.com. Um, tons, just, there's tons of stuff on there. Pretty much anything that you're interested in, in the fantasy or science fiction or horror, horror genre, um, we have. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at Beth Tabler. It's extremely exciting handle. Um, and then you can find me on Grimdark Magazine. And awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What about you guys? Alan, where, where can we find you? Uh, Library of Alan Zandria on YouTube. And then it's just Alan Zandria on um, Twitter and Instagram. My Instagram is a bunch of me posting about uh, my uh, my students, my Latin students. That's a lot of that. I, I am so bad at like freaking promoting videos on Twitter and Instagram. I forget <laughs> and, like every like eighth video. I'll be like, oh, that's what this is for. And I'll go do it. But uh, I'm just bad at it. And I use Twitter to follow, you know, uh, authors. It's the best place to follow authors for sure. And I'll comment stuff. And But YouTube is – YouTube and my Discord. Oh, I have a Discord, but the link's in the in the YouTube description. The Discord is the best place to find me. That's where I, I hang out and, you know, uh, talk about books and stuff. 
Um, but that's that link is in my the description of my videos. Okay, I'm gonna link. join your Discord. It's but it's way fun. I yeah, think. try try and use Discord more. <laughs> Bookborn, what about you? Um, you can find me on YouTube at Bookborn. Uh, that's where I am, and then I'm on, also on Instagram at bookborn.reviews, where I post all of my book reviews. So hmm. those are the two places you can find me. Not anywhere else. <laughs> if you want to talk to me, you can email me on Instagram. <laughs> I have tried to make pretty book pictures, and I just lack the. Uh, I can't do it. It I just takes just... practice. If you guys, oh. I'm not saying like mine are amazing or anything, but if you go and look back at where I started. And then you look at now, you'll see that a long way has has occurred. A journey, a journey has been I, had. I don't know why I would need to grab a pine cone and put it next to a book and take a picture of it. Like why? Like why? Aesthetics, that Alan. Aesthetics, <laughs> aesthetics. And I use pine cones a lot in my in my you know pictures, so I feel specifically called out. Pine cones, okay. I don't know why the pine cone and it like it's what I don't understand the why there's needs to be a pine cone and I don't know. I don't know. I don't get it. I'm not an Instagram user. Very I'm not good at it. So <laughs> Mahir, what about Tell you? Tell me if you like my pine cones on, on Instagram. <laughs> Mahir, no comment. Okay, sorry, find... Mahir, you tell me where we can find you. When you go to look for book book covers, like do you look for pick like books that have pine cones near them? Like <laughs> Is that how you find the next read? I don't understand why there needs to be pine cones or like sprigs of parsley, like near books. I don't get it. I'm gonna go on Instagram just to see it, bookborn. It's got, a, it's got a look. I'm oh, not really attacking gotta... bookborn. There's a lot of people that use pine cones. All right. Well, in uh, like a cup <laughs> of tea and pine cones, and it's giving off a cozy atmosphere for the book and. But, I don't understand. Well, well, then, what do you do when it's like a book that isn't cozy? Like, do you put it next to like a bloody rapier and like maybe a sword? Like, on yeah, a I mean, sometimes, Actually, sometimes yeah. I use swords. I use like when I did Cut to the Void, I did like red food coloring to make it look like blood or whatever. Yeah, sometimes if I'm really you inspired. Have bloody rapiers lying around your house? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you asked. <laughs> look <laughs> look i was really hoping she was going to put it back without looking like I, I, that would have been really cool <laughs> like, my, village, like walking my away from the have a blacksmith so i have no way in acquiring such good metal i have to grab the rake that i use to <laughs> you know to rake the pine cones off the rake oh, the pine cones that i then sell to the patrician aristocrats who put them next to books on instagram <laughs> that's my living i'm pine cone farmer my husband's a blacksmith too. I Alan, totally... I have a hookup for you. Author Jesse Kang. He also does, you know, really cool swords. What's what's his name? JC Kang. Oh, right on. Oh yeah, yeah. He has sure. a his book here too. Uh huh. He he makes really authentic, uh, awesome looking swords. Forged in Fire is one of my favorite shows. I love. Watching I have those seen people every episode of Forged in yes, Fire. Yes, yes. <laughs> every episode. Might we have a we have a the whole blacksmith setup in our garage. My husband yes. has an anvil. He's yes. yes. Forge. Yes. Don't quench that in water. No, don't so stupid. You don't have to quench in water. <laughs> the infamous Claymore episode where. Oh, so yeah. bad. <laughs> I love, sorry, I love Force and Fire. I'd be a terrible blacksmith. Yes, it will cut. It will kill. It yes, will kill. Uh, yes, it will As kill. blood shoots out of the... Yes, out of the, 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 the ballistics dummy. <laughs> I'll see. So yeah, Matt, it will, it will cut. <laughs> it will kill. Yes. Okay, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I literally just usurped, like, everything you were going to say. I just... I cut I you off. Sorry. Whose turn it was? Was it David or me? It's yours. It's, it's your turn. Oh, it's me. Okay. It's your turn. <laughs> uh, uh, well, you can find us on Fantasy Book Critic, uh, you know, on the uh, dot block on the blog spot. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at at Fantasy Book Critic. Uh, I think Shazzy is also running Fantasy Book Critic on Instagram. I you can search for it at Fantasy Book Crit, and I we are also on YouTube. It's a fledgling channel, so don't expect great stuff. But we do author interviews on you know. On YouTube, uh, and we have a bunch of, well, not a bunch, we have some interviews, you know, uh, but it's fun. You can check us out. Awesome. Subbing awesome. now.
Thank you. <laughs> I will do the reverse as soon as I figure out how to do so. <laughs> I'm really bad at YouTube. <laughs> David, what about you? Yeah, so fanfiatic.com, uh, clearly the fanfiatic YouTube channel that we're currently chatting on. Um, Adrian also runs the SFF Addicts podcast, uh, which mm -hmm. also does videos that post here on the fanfiatic channel. Uh, and then on YouTube, I'm at Lord TBR underscore FFA, if you would like to give me a follow, which I think most of you already do. So, <laughs> um, but that's really it. I mean, I'm on Instagram, just very little at fanfiatic. I, I just kind of like re booted my instagram account but i don't really post a whole lot there yet so yeah okay well thank you thank you everybody in the audience for for coming on this little little fun journey journey with us <laughs> this pine cold filled journey <laughs> that's good money you find any let me know i gotta sell it i hope it was <laughs> informative <laughs> Yeah. That's actually that's actually how we became friends. She came to my my uh, my little pine cone stand and bought. You know, I gave her a deal. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, thank, thanks for everybody tuning in. Thanks to all of you guys for being here. Um, I thought this was an awesome chat, and uh, I'm always open if anybody has any other questions about blogging and stuff. Yeah, I mean, same. I mean, I, I, I figure you guys all are as well. Uh, I mean, yeah. that's another thing I really love about this community is just the openness. So. Um, but Beth, thank you so much for yeah. moderating. I'm yeah. sorry. Moder all right. I never, I never know where my camera is facing. I don't look too enough. Um, but yeah, I, th I thought this was great. Thanks for having me on. Oh, thank well, you, Beth. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, David, for my hosting. Thank you. Guys. Guys. This awesome TBRCon. And thank you to everybody in the comments, Tiago, John, and everyone else. Yeah. And to Alan. And Alan, we definitely got to talk more. Oh, yeah. You yes. guys are best. We are. We like the same crap. Ha, 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 ha.